What's up, coaches? Coach Perkins here. So I have a documentation video for you guys on the research that I've been doing throughout the semester with the uh, with you guys. Some of you guys who have just chipped in, I appreciate you guys. And for the players, you know. And I'm gonna start with the research question, and that's basically saying, you know, what happens to new Aggie football players when they come into our program, and I support their transition into our culture and helping them become better individuals because it's you know it's a new area it's a new thing for them a lot of people have been home their whole life so transitioning away from home has been a big thing for them and so there's a couple things that i just wanted to talk about you know that i've learned and that i've seen and i believe that we could do better as coaches you know and i talked to the players about it it's called the socio-cultural theory you know and it's accepting different power structures within the program this is also relevant to us as a coaching staff because you know, I think we get too power uh, power hungry because we get I'm an assistant coach and I get it I'm a GA, but there's no it's there's no you know working together and stuff. It's more like you're the GA, you get it done, and then you take the work and do whatever you need to do with it. This is how and so you know I understand the the different power that everybody has and you know the head coach says something everybody got to do it or you know, it trickles down, basically comes back to the GAs and stuff. But I think we gotta do a better job of treating everybody the same and have respect for everybody. You know, just because I'm a GA doesn't mean that we aren't, that I don't, I can't work, that I can't do the same thing, or I can't have a similar opinion, or I might not, I could be right about something. You know, you, you guys, we don't know everything. As a coach, nobody knows everything. And on a daily basis, I think we should learn from each other. I think we need to do a better job of that. So that's one of the things. Um, and then one of the questions I had on the theory is why do um, players go to certain coaches and not go to their position coaches? You know, I, we all have those players that would hit us up and try to talk to us and everything like that. It's different than, but they won't go to their position coach. You know, that kind of speaks volume of itself. And you can look at it in a negative light, like, oh, they're only trying to talk to you because you're over here trying to be their friend, you know. And I don't believe it's like that. And the reason I don't believe it's like that is because I think the players, they want to have a relationship with you. You know, you're here. You're with them for four years, and you're trying to help them. You're teaching them to be young men. And I think it's a really good thing when they reach out to you. If they're able to communicate with you, that's what you want. You don't want them afraid to talk to you because, you know, you're a hard ass. Yeah, that's fine being a hard ass, but if you're not communicating or showing that you truly care in the right way, they're not going to talk to you. And then when you need to communicate with them, they're not going to respond and stuff. So I think we need to do a better job of that because their response time to some of the other coaches is different than it would be to others. And that's, you know, fairly obvious as to who it is and why. And... So I just want to use some, you know, I kind of use this with the players as well, our defensive goals. This is our game against Alabama. Obviously, you know how that went. But, you know, there's no, 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 no in these categories, right? And the reason I wanted to show that is because we as coaches, we don't adjust very well. You know, something is going wrong, we just blame the players and leave it at that. It's obviously everything that we have set in stone is perfectly right, and we know everything. We don't adjust, and that's why that is like that. Now, if we're not going to adjust and make things better, then or try to make things better, and we think we know it all, then we're not going to ever get anywhere here. Let's be honest, right? Because we're sitting here talking about Nick Saban and the Alabama football program. We're making fun of them like we're somebody right now, when we're nobody to be making fun of anybody. So we, we got to do a better job. The reason this is all red is so it's because of us first. Whatever's put on that field is because of us. That's what we put on the field. So we can't blame nobody else but ourselves. You know, and then the next thing I want to show is, you know, this is one of our game scripts, you know, our game plan scripts, you know, our calls and everything that we make against different personnel and situations and, and stuff like that. You know, we don't even need this. You might as well throw that away. Why? Because as soon as we get into a game, oh, and, you know, crap hits the fan. So what's the first thing that we do? Oh, we just make one call. Oh, we get away from our game plan. No, don't get away from your game plan. Just adjust and, you know, 
come together and make things better. Find a way. Don't just be an individual like, oh, my guys can do this, your guys can do that. And it, like, we, we got to get away from that. You know, and there, there's one thing that I wanted to, a couple things I wanted to read to you guys real fast. So you guys can see what I'm talking about, the importance of relationship. You know, I had a player text me and I just wanted to show you guys, well, read to you guys a little bit on how much that meant to me and what was ex exactly was said. Because it proved to me that the importance of relationships is a huge thing. And every time I watch something on ESPN, they're always talking about the best coaches and one of the things and the reason they're such a great coach is because of the relationship that's developed through, you know, with uh, through their players. So one of the players said, what's up, Coach Perk? God put you on my heart today, the other, uh, the other night, and I wasn't sure how I would go about this. And I know your mom is a sensitive topic, and I could only imagine if I were to lose mine how you and your brother did. If it was me, honestly, I would let it ball up and eat me deep down inside. I know it's still something new and you're still adjusting to the world. I want you to know that, no, I love you like a big brother. Anything you need, I mean anything, I doubt you because you are my big brother. I'm blessed to be able to see you grow and do something you love. You have a passion for not only the game of football, but even for making others around you great. Continue to let God use you, man. Keep making the amazing strides that you are already doing. Keep God first. You have a great heart, mind, and soul. Blessed to call you my brother and be able to have met you and build a relationship with you. You help me ground it. You help keep me grounded just like my older brother does. And you have great wisdom that you won't hesitate to share because you want the best out of people. Can't thank you enough. Words can only express so much, brother. Just know I'm a text, phone call away. If you need anything, I'll be there. Much love. Hope you and your family are doing great. See, that's what it's about. That, that right there is what it's about. You know, a young man, they don't have to send you a long message or anything like that, but they know that you care. And sometimes they want to express that to you. And for me, that's a big, that's, it's huge. Now, I, I think if we get better at that and developing a true relationship, then our culture will come together as a staff. A staff unity. Coach Martin talked about that. If we truly were to be able to have some staff unity and people start walking around here like we hate each other, man, the sky is the limit. Sky is the limit to what we could do here, you know. So I just want you guys to, you know, I just threw out some tips and what I think we could do better and, you know, kind of sum it up, you know, more togetherness, true love, you know, family. This stuff's going to develop a culture. Work hard, you know, and work for each other. You know, at the end of the day, we all want one goal, right? It's to win games. We gotta win each day first. So we gotta handle things in our office first, in our own office, and then when we come together, handle things together as a team. And then we'll get the ending results that we want. Another thing that I wanted to read to you guys real quick before I let you go is selfless as an individual, but selfish as a team. Let that one sink in. Thank you.